Gee whiz. Hello, friends. I'm John Henderson. Welcome to this series of old-time radio show episodes called Gee Whiz. These are the stories of the schemes, trials, and loves of the typical American teenagers, Andy Hardy, Archie Andrews, and Henry Aldridge. We're going to start off with an episode of The Aldridge Family that they first did in 1940, and then they did again four years later, same actors, same word-for-word script. The only difference was new commercials. You know, folks, sometimes it's not the things Henry says, but the way he says them that make all the difference in the world. And that's true of a lot of things we all say. Take the simple phrase, oh, yes. And just notice what a variety of meanings a person can put into it. For example, suppose you were invited out to dinner, and your hostess asked you if you had ever heard of Jell-O. Your answer would be as follows. Oh, yes. Then when she informs you that there's to be Jell-O for dessert... You might say eagerly, oh, yes? And later, when she asks you if you want a second dish, your reply is sure to be, oh, yes. So you see, friends, it does make a big difference the way you may say a thing. Now, that's true when you say, oh, yes, to a second dish of Jell-O. And it's just as true when you order a package of Jell-O at the store. That one was from 1944, but we're going to listen to the original from September 5th, 1940. The Aldrich Family, based on characters originated by Clifford Goldsmith and starring Ezra Stone as Henry with Jackie Kelk as Homer. Henry! Henry Aldrich! Coming, Mother! All of us know a town like Centerville, a family like the Aldriches, and all of us know a teenage boy like Henry Aldrich. Anything is likely to happen when Henry is around, (laughs) and it usually does. As our scene opens tonight, we find Henry Aldrich in the dining room with his father and mother. Mother, will you have some more peas? No, thank you. You finish the few peas there are there. Oh, I wouldn't think of touching them. Father, wouldn't you like these peas? No, thank you. I think you ought to have them, Father. I'll just scrape them into your plate. Uh, Henry, I don't want them. Would you like some bread, Mother? No, dear. Now, just stop passing things and eat. Well, if you don't do want anything, just ask for it, huh? Boy, did I see a swell movie this afternoon. I'm going out and get some butter. Sit still, Mother. I'll go out and get it. I'll get it. Give me the dish, Mother. My goodness, one would think you had nothing to do but run around waiting on all of us. Sam, will you please tell me what's gotten into Henry? I have no more idea than you. I offered him his allowance a few minutes ago, and he refused it. Well, something's wrong. After dinner, you'd better take his temperature. Here you are, Mother. Will you have some butter? No, thank you. Oh, go ahead and take a little, Mother. I have some. Here. Did I tell you I saw a movie this afternoon? I believe you did. Boy, was there a swell guy in it. Sam, don't forget when you're downtown tomorrow to get two decks of cards and bring them home at noon. Oh, giving a bridge party? I am. Well, listen, there's no reason in the world why I couldn't get those cards for you. That's what I was waiting for. Give him a dollar, Sam, if he wants to help. Henry, are you quite sure none of this has anything to do with your conscience? My conscience? Mm Mm-hmm. What conscience? Then you haven't any? No, sir. I'm not surprised. Mother, about how much do you spend a week on food? Why, Mary's away, about $14. Well, from now on, I'm paying my share. Why, Henry Aldrich, you're not going to do anything of the kind. Yes, I am, Mother. No more free eating for me. Have you struck oil, Henry? I haven't struck oil, but I've got a job. How much do you think I ought to pay a week for my room? I've no idea. Well, supposing I was a stranger here and you didn't know me. And I came to the door and said, I want a room. How much would you charge me? Personally, I wouldn't even let you in. (laughs) Well, why not? Not if your hands look the way they do right this minute. Well, gee whiz, I'll go right up and wash them. But before I go, let's settle on a price. Would three dollars a week be too much? What kind of a job do you have? You'll learn soon enough. I begin tomorrow morning. And I'm going to give half of every cent I make to the Red Cross or something. Well, isn't that fine? That movie I saw this afternoon was called The Generous Gentleman. And boy, was it swell. 
The gentleman did kind things for everybody. Did he? And did people like him? Even when he became old, everybody liked him. And this swell-looking girl that never liked him before finally fell in love with him. Henry, eat your mashed potatoes. Yes, Father. From now on, I'm going to help my friends and do little things for strangers that are in trouble. And from now on, Mother, you'll never have to tell me more than once to do anything. Then for the last time, will you please go up and wash your hands? Yes, Mother, but first let me tell you how I'm going to help people. Young man, have I ever seen you around this golf course before? Well, I've been around it. Ever had any experience, Caddy? Well, after all, there isn't much to carrying a bag of clubs, is there? Hmm. If there were any other boys on hand, I wouldn't even consider you. Now, stand back while I put this ball on the tee. Uh, yes, sir. But you don't have to worry about me. I know that when you're going to hit the ball, I should keep very quiet. That's fine. Personally, I think if you're being paid to do something, you ought to do it. Mm-hmm. Even if it's just to keep quiet. Do you want me to put that ball back on the tee for you? No, thank you. Just stand back. Yes, sir. And keep your eye on this ball. When I hit it, I left my glasses at home. Oh, gee, I have wonderful eyesight. Good. Yes, sir. Everybody speaks about it. Have you seen the picture called The Generous Gentleman? Will you please stand back? I'd like to hit this ball. Four down there. Oh, I know who that is down there. What do you mean by yelling just as I swing? Oh, did I frighten you? I didn't make a terrible shot. Have you hit it already? Didn't you have your eye on it? Well, uh, we'll find it all right. It might have gone over here to the left. What makes you think so? Well, we'll look to the left first and then work around. Mm. The reason I didn't hit it straighter is because of this coat. Would you like to have me carry your coat? All the way around the course? Gee, I don't mind a little thing like that, especially if it helps anybody. All right, here. I'll throw it right over my shoulder. Ah, oh, Herbert. Hiya, Henry. I thought that was you. Boy, there are a lot of balls out on this course. I picked up balls just since I got here. Kathy, have you found my ball? Not yet, Mr. Eddie, but Herbert says this is a very good place to look for them. Here it is, right here. Oh, have we found it? I thought it would be to the left. Let me have my mashie. Your mashie? Do you think that's the best one to use for a shot like that? I'd like my mashie. Yes, sir. And when I hit the ball this time, keep your eye on it. Yes, sir. No more talking. And this other young man, don't stand so near. No, sir. Herbert, have you seen a picture called The Generous Gentleman? Young man. Yes, sir. Herbert. Why? He's about to swing the club. Oh. What's the name of that picture, Henry? Caddy, may I ask who this young man is? Oh, I guess I didn't introduce you, did I? This is Herbert. How do you do, sir? What are you doing here? I asked him to meet me here. What for? He wants to learn how to caddy. I told him the easiest way would be to watch me. I see. Well, supposing, Herbert, you go over and sit under that shady tree. Not the nearest tree, nor the one just beyond, but the one way over on the far side of the fairway. Yes, sir. Don't be hurt, Herbert. People that are new at this game are always easily upset. Young man. Yes, sir? Have you your eye on this ball? Yes, sir. Very well, then. Here goes. Gee whiz, what a sock. Where did it go? It hit that tree. Where did you learn to shoot so straight? I never made a shot like that before. Well, I didn't think you should have used your mashie. The whole trouble is this sweater. Oh, that's all right. Just take it off. I'll carry it. You're sure you don't mind? Gee whiz, I'm here to serve you, aren't I? All right. Yeah. Give me the number three iron. The number three? Yes, sir. You want me to roll that log out of your way? No, thank you. I'll show you how to put the ball right straight down on that green. Okay. And don't say a word. No, sir. Hey, Whiz, look at that ball travel, Herbert. Almost in a circle. That's the first time I ever made a shot like that. You know, Mr. Eddy, I had a feeling you shouldn't use that number three. The trouble is my collar's too tight. Want me to take your necktie? You sure it won't be too much trouble? Gee, no. I'll just roll it up and stuff it in my pocket. Did you see where the ball landed? Yes, sir. Do you see that clump of trees to the left? Uh Uh-huh. And that house on the other side of the road? Yes. Well, it went right in the yard of the house just beyond. How did it do that? Well, I, I guess you just laid into it. All right, all right. Give me another ball there. I'll hit it on down. You go over and get that other one and meet me at the green. Yes, sir. Here you are. I'll run all the way. And don't come back without that ball. Oh, you don't have to worry. I saw exactly where it went, I think. 
Pardon me. <clears throat> Pardon me. Was there something you wanted? Did you see a golf ball land in your backyard? Well, if one did, you better get it before Papa does. I should? Yes. Papa says it's because things like that that our chickens won't lay. Mm, I wonder where that one of mine went. Well, I'd help you only. I'm having some trouble with this garden hose. What's the matter? Well, the spigot on the side of the house won't turn off. Well, gee whiz, let me give you a hand. Well, don't get all wet. Oh, don't worry about me. I can turn it. Have you seen the generous gentleman? The what? It's a swell picture I saw yesterday. In it, a guy went out in the rain as a favor to somebody. And guess what? He got soaking wet, too. He did? Yeah. <clears throat> Well, that's strange. Well, well, won't it turn off? You know, I, I think I can fix it. Say, say, isn't this your ball right here? So it is. Look, I, I think if I just slip the handle of this golf club into the spokes of the faucet, I can get a little leverage on it. Oh, my goodness, look at your shoe. Look, the club just fits in. Oh, oh good gracious, look at what you've done to it. Imagine. I almost spent his number number three iron double. Well, well, can you straighten it? I think I can. Fortunately, it's steel. There. Unless you held it right up to your eye, you'd hardly notice it had been bent. (laughs) I'll try the faucet once more. Oh, now look at what you've done. She was, I broke it off. You don't have another faucet, do you? Oh, of course we don't. Do you have a telephone? No, we don't. Well, don't you have anything for an emergency like that? No. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll run over to the clubhouse and telephone for a plumber. But, but how about the basement? Oh, it's running right into it. I'll have someone here before you know it. <laughs> Imagine this. What is it? I found a dollar in my pocket. It's to get my mother some playing cards, but I can get them with the money I earned for caddying. Here, you take it. Well, what for? To pay for the faucet. Why should you pay for it? Well, I broke it, didn't I? Here, go ahead. You take it. Well, well, thank you. I'll take these clubs and this sweater and coat, and I'll run every step of the way. Well, hurry. Goodbye, and I'm very glad to have been a help to you. Hey, Henry, is that you? Yes, Herbert. Does does this road swing around to the clubhouse? Yeah, where have you been? I've been busy. Well, Mr. Reddy says he needs you. I wonder whether I ought to help him a little before I put in that call. I see a ball, Henry. I'll see you later. Hey, buddy. Who's that? Come back up here on the road a second, will you? My car's stuck in the mud. The, the only trouble is I, I've got a couple other things to do. Well, couldn't you lend a fellow a hand? You need some help? Yeah. Well, maybe I can assist you. Start your motor. No, no don't start it quite so fast. Okay. Just start it real slow, see? Now, look, I'll tell you what. Back up until I stop moving my hands. You won't let me drop into the ditch, will you? Oh, no, there's some boards over it. Okay. Come on. Come on. Oh, gee whiz. You ought to hear what I'm saying. Mister, do do you have a shovel? What would I be doing with a shovel? Well, you certainly need one. Wait a minute, here comes a car behind you. Hello there. Hello. Won't you please let me get by? Well, could you pull up against this gentleman and push? Oh my goodness, I can't drive that well. Well, would you like to have me take the wheel? Oh, uh, it won't take more than a minute. I'm in a terrible hurry. Well, it won't take a second. You better stand over there so you don't get any mud splashed on you. Well, that's very thoughtful of you, I'm sure. Gee whiz, that's the least I can do. <laughs> this reminds me of a moving picture that's in town this week. How are you coming? Are you ready ahead there? Come on. Here we go. How far in are you? Even deeper than you. And what am I to 
to do? Well, I- I'll tell you, Miss. I- I've got to go to the clubhouse and phone a plumber anyhow. I'd be very glad to put in a call for a tow car at the same time. And in the meantime, I'm due downtown at court. You are? And if I'm not there, I have to forfeit $25. Well, my father's a lawyer, and I'll phone him, too, and tell him to go down and fix things for you. Are you, are you sure he can? Oh, gee, he's like me. He likes to do things for people. In the same way? Well, I'll, I'll beat it over and phone right away. Well, my name is Mrs. McGill. Yes, ma'am. And the charge is of the talking back to an officer. Yes, ma'am. And if you get a chance to see that picture of the guy that was so nice to everyone, don't miss it. Henry, I thought you were going to see Mr. Reddy. Herbert, Herbert, will you go over to the clubhouse for me? I can't, Henry. I'm finding so many balls. You are? Sure. I just sold six to Mr. Reddy. Well, where is he? You go right through those trees there into the underbrush. Okay. And then go straight through to the swamp. Okay. Tell him he's foolish to look in there, though. I've already cleaned that part out. Mr. Eddy! Oh, Mr. Eddy! Where have you been? I, I, I just want to tell you, I'll be right back. Where are you going? To call a plumber. What for? I got a lady in a ditch. How did you get a lady in a ditch? I was trying to get another guy out. When? Right after I busted a faucet for a girl. What faucet? The girls! Uh, would you like to wear your coat or sweater or anything? I would not. Boy, have I been having a tough time. You've been having a tough time. I just played four holes with one club. How did you do? Young man, have you had a sunstroke? No, sir. Do I look pale? Are you going to caddy for me? Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Reddy. Uh, I'll give you two more clubs. That ought to hold you while I go up and phone. Oh, no, you don't. You caddy now or never. But you don't realize the position you're putting everyone in. Come here with that bag. I, I can't help them. You're going around with me if I have to drive you around with this club. <laughs> Now, getting back to the troubles of Henry Aldrich. Henry has decided to be kind and helpful to everyone he meets. So far, he's done very well. While caddying on the golf course for a Mr. Eddy, he's broken a water spigot and run two cars into a muddy ditch. Well, as the scene opens, Henry is speaking. Mr. Eddy. Mr. Eddy. As soon as you've knocked the ball over this water hazard, could I just run up and phone? Give me my number three iron. You're a number three iron? Isn't that the one you used that took me away for so long? May I have it? Yes, Mr. Ray. Then may I put in that call? Stand back, please. Yes, sir. You know, if I hadn't left my glasses behind, I'd swear this club was crooked. You really think so? Henry! What, Herbert? Which way is he going to hit that ball? Over the water hazard, and you keep away from it. Come here, Herbert. Or... Boy, what a shot. That was the that was this ball. That was ahead of his club. I never did a thing like that before. Gee, they certainly make clubs poorly nowadays. Give me my number two iron. Mr. Reddy, I really think you ought to let me pay for that number three. What became of my ball? Herbert, put that ball back. I just wanted to see whether it was his. Who did you think it would be? It's yours, all right. Herbert, could you step over here to one side a minute? What do you have? Now then. Let's see what this iron does. Listen, Herbert, I want you to go to the clubhouse and put in three phone calls. If they won't let you, say it's for Mr. Eddie. One call is to a plumber to shut off some water. One is to a garage to... Yes, Mr. Aldrich. Will you take a letter, please? Mr. Aldrich, while you were out to lunch, a young man by the name of uh, Herbert Thompson telephoned. Herbert? Oh, Henry's friend. What did he want? Well, the fact is he seemed rather confused. At any rate, you're to go down to court at once and help get Henry out of trouble. What kind of trouble? All I understand is your son has talked back to some officer. That's a fine thing. I can't possibly go down. I'm scheduled for a conference. Impertinence to an officer, then? Eh? What did he say to him? I don't know. Well, Henry can just stay down there. I don't believe in interfering with the law. I understand if you don't straighten things out, the fine will be $25. $25? 
20... Call the committee and tell them I'll be late. You're going to court? Of course I am. I can't afford to pay $25 any more than anyone else can. Now, who's that? I've no idea. Hello? Yes? One moment, please. Mr. Aldrich, I have a message for you. Who is it? Mrs. Aldrich says she has a whole house full of guests waiting to play bridge and there aren't any cards. Didn't Henry get them? He doesn't seem to have. Well, here, take this dollar, close up the office and get her some cards. Excuse me, sir. What is it, young man? Have you seen Mr. Eddie around the clubhouse here? Oh, Mr. Eddie is still down the locker room. Well, will you tell him I found his coat, but I'm sorry we mislaid his sweater. Yes, sir. One moment, young man. Oh, I, uh, I, I found your coat, Mr. Eddie, but I think I ought to tell you. The, the fellow with the lawnmower ran over one of the sleeves. He did. Well, I'm not surprised. But, Mr. Eddie, all I was trying to do when I carried it was to help you. Yes. I was trying to serve you. Here's fifty, seventy-five, one dollar. Now, let's just forget that we ever even met. Well, frankly, I don't feel I should even take the money. Just take it and let's not say anything more about it. There's just one thing for which I suppose I ought to thank you. What's that? For 15 years, my wife has been trying to get me to give up golf. Today, I'm giving it up. Forever? Forever. Well, I'm certainly sorry. Let's not discuss it anymore. If we ever meet on the street, let's not even speak to each other. Yes, Mr. Eddie. Now then, do you think you can do one more thing for me and do it right? Oh, yes, sir. Anything you say. All right. Go around in front of the clubhouse and tell the boy to bring my car here. Yes, sir. But don't you go near the car. Don't you even touch the car. No, sir. And will you be... Where will you be? Here? I mean... I will be right over here at the desk. Talking to Mr. Blothoff. Yes, sir. Did you want me, Mr. Eddy? I do. Something gone wrong, Mr. Eddy? Wrong? Wrong? I just want to tell you what I think of the way your entire club is wrong. Did something in particular go wrong? I... I hire a caddy to look for my golf balls, and I spend my whole day looking for my caddy. Well, do you know what my score was? A hundred and eighty-five. Well... I usually do it in 120. <laughs> and then to add insult to injury, I come into the locker room looking forward to a shower. Oh, just a minute, Mr. Eddie. That's something Don't I want to tell you. Don't interrupt me. Uh, I get under the shower, and in the midst of my bath, the water is shut off. Completely shut off. But that's what I want to explain. It's something over which we had no control. Through some misdirection, a plumber came here, and unknown to us, shut off all the water in the clubhouse. Why? Well, all we know is some young man called him. That is no excuse. The fact still remains that underneath my clothes, right this minute, I am covered with soap suds. Well, I'm very sorry. Sorry? Did you ever walk around with suds on you? Oh, no, sir. Try it sometime. Mr. Reddy. Mr. Reddy, I have some rather disconcerting news for you. Now, what happened? Was yours a black roadster? What has happened to it? Nothing except that the fellow out in front says that sometime this afternoon, a man from a garage came and towed it away. Towed it away? Who told him to do that? He didn't know. He just said somebody had phoned for him to come and get it. Father. Father, would you like some more butter? No, thank you. Are you sure you're going to have enough? Henry, if I were you, I wouldn't bother your father anymore. Oh. Is he tired, Mother? He is. Both tired and embarrassed. Did something go wrong? Not a thing. All I did was miss a yearly business meeting in order to bail my son out of jail for talking back to an officer who didn't know anything about it. Father, that was entirely Herbert's fault. Oh, no. No, it wasn't. It was your fault. Trying to be kind to someone you didn't even know. Well, it's a funny thing, but things didn't work out like this in the generous gentleman. Did the generous gentleman forget to bring cards for his mother's bridge party? Well, Mother, I'm, I'm going to pay you back that dollar you gave me for the cards. I really am. I'd give you what I earned this afternoon, only I, I paid that to Mrs. McGill toward her fine. 
You gave your dollar to Mrs. McGill? Yes, sir. And I told her if there was ever anything I could do to help her, I'd be very glad to. And what did she say? She said she was quite sure there wasn't a thing I could do. Oh, I'll answer the phone, Mother. Just eat your dinner. I'll see who it is. Yes, Mother. Henry, when does school start? In a few days. Why? No reason. I was just wondering. Is there anything I can pass you, Father? Uh, no, 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 thank you. Gee, the more I think about how Herbert balled things up today... Henry, do you know a Mr. Eddie? Mr. Eddie? Yeah, in a way. Why? He just phoned. For me? Uh, does he want me to caddy for him tomorrow? He wants to know whether you have his necktie. Oh, gee whiz, I've got it in my pocket. I'll take it to him tomorrow. He said you're not to take it to him. You're to mail it to him. Well, that's certainly very thoughtful of him. Because I had planned to do something else tomorrow. What? Well, I wasn't able to give the Red Cross any money today, and I thought I'd go over and help them instead. Here, Henry, is a dollar. A dollar? What for? For the Red Cross. They're having enough problems without your going over and helping them. Listen again next week, same time, same station, for another sparkling half hour with your favorite youngster, his family, and his pals. The Aldrich Family, starring Ezra Stone, is written by Clifford Goldsmith. The Aldrich Family from 1940. In the 1944 recording of that episode, they had one additional scene at the end. Henry, I want to tell you how nicely you helped with the dishes. Thank you, Mother. Thank you very much. Could I go out to the movies this evening? There's a swell picture. What's the name of it? Jesse James. No, for one week you're not to go inside a movie. And now, the Archies. In this episode of Archie, they mentioned the new song, Nature Boy. There was a boy, a very strange enchanted boy. So here is The Adventures of Archie Andrews from August 21st, 1948. protection, Swift's premium pranks now come to you cellophane wrapped in handy one-pound packages. Made fresh daily in Swift kitchens from coast to coast, Swift's premium pranks are then wrapped in the new handy sanitary flavor saver pack and brought to you at the very peak of their tantalizing flavor with all their natural goodness sealed in. So kids, tell your mom that you want Swift's premium pranks. And mom, get some today. They're delicious. And you'll be glad to know that Swift's premium francs are economical. There's no waste to them. Every bite is all nourishment, all dinner quality meat. Ask for them today. Swift's premium francs in the one pound cellophane package. And now 
now for our weekly visit to Riverdale. It's a sunny Saturday morning as we're looking on the Andrews home, and we find Mrs. Andrews working in the kitchen. There was a boy, a very strange enchanted boy. They say he wandered very far. Yes, dear. Where are you? I'm in the kitchen. Oh, all right, dear. Did you get the grass all cut, dear? Yes, dear, I certainly did. And, Mary, you know something? Yes, dear? I am starved. You know, you can really work up an appetite mowing a lawn. Well, don't worry, dear. We'll eat just as soon as we get to Rock Hill. Well, that's swell. I'm so hungry, I can... Get to where? Rock Hill. Right. Well, Mary, what, what's Rock Hill got to do with my lunch? Oh, dear, I forgot to tell you. I thought we'd go on a picnic lunch today. Oh, all right. For a minute, I thought you'd lose picnic. Mary, what picnic? Our picnic. It's such a lovely day, and we hadn't been on a picnic this year. And I thought it'd be fun if we all got in the car and had lunch out at Rock Hill. Oh, fine. We're all going on a picnic, but nobody asked me if I even want to go. Oh, Fred, I meant to, but I forgot. You don't mind going, do you? Mary, I certainly do. Oh, but dear, now, we have first been... of all, I'm starved right now. Well, Second of all, I see no point in eating out at Rock Hill with the ants and the mosquitoes when I can eat in the comfort of my own dining room. Third of all, you might ask me if I want to go before you make your plans. And fourth of all, as I said, first of all, I'm starved right now. But, Fred, I can now, get everything... Mary, right. no buts about it. We'll go on a picnic some other time. We are definitely not going to any picnic today. Well, when does the picnic begin? Oh, great. Oh, hiya, Dad. Dad, did Mom tell you about the picnic? Yes, Archie. Isn't that but... a swell idea, Dad? Yes, Archie. But I thought but... of it all by myself. All right, Archie. So you thought of it all by yourself. We'll give you a gold star. But it so happens, Archie, we are not going on any... Fred. Huh? Fred, can't you see how eager the boy is? Oh, Mary, that boy is always eager for anything. <laughs> Yes, I... dear, but I told him we could go on a picnic, and he's got his heart all set on it. Now, you're not going to disappoint him, are you? But, Mary, I'm hung... Oh, me. Well, what's the use? I can't argue with both of you. If you decided I'm going on a picnic, I might just as well get used to the idea that I'm going on a picnic. Oh, gee, thanks, Dad. We'll have a swell time. We'll go all on. All right, yeah. Archie. Never mind that right now. Uh, did you find a picnic basket? Yes, Mom. Right here. Good. Now, Archie, the food's right over there. You put it in the lunch basket. And, uh, Fred, you better change your clothes. Put on a sport shirt and flax, dear. All right, dear. Yeah. But for Pete's sake, hurry up. You know, the sooner I eat, the better I'll like. Well, Freddy, we'll be ready to leave as soon as you are. Uh, now, Archie, I want you... Oh, dear. Archie, go see who that is. Okay, Mom. But I sure can't wait to get started on this picnic. She was Betty. Hello, Archie. How are you? Oh, I'm feeling... good. What you doing, huh? Well, I was I getting... thought maybe we could go swimming or something. Well, I it's couldn't... a wonderful day for swimming. Don't you think so, Archie? Yes, yes and I just love to go swimming. Well, Betty, I... Especially with you. Betty, I... I guess the whole gang will be out at the lake today. Well, Betty, could you... And we have loads and loads and loads of fun. Well, I... Golly, you're not saying very much, Archie. Is something wrong? <laughs> Betty, look. Are you mad I'm... at me? Betty, I... Did I say something I shouldn't have? Well, I... Don't you like me anymore, Archie? Betty, listen. I like you very much, oh, but golly, I... Oh, golly, you do? Betty, look. Why, I'm... Archie, you haven't said that to me in the longest time. Well, you don't... Oh, he likes me. Betty, look. I like you. I like the day. I like swimming, and I'd like to go swimming with you today, but I can't. Why not? Because my folks and I are going on a picnic out at Rock Hill, and we're leaving right away. Oh. Well, I... I'm awful sorry, Betty. Oh, I'm sorry, too. Maybe we can go swimming some other time. Archie! I gotta go now, Betty, but thanks for the invitation. Oh, that's okay, Archie. Have a nice time at Rock Hill. Uh, thanks, Betty, I will. Bye now. Bye. Archie, can you run upstairs and get the old tablecloth out of the linen closet, dear? We'll need that to spread on the grass. Okay, Mom. Well, I'm all set to go. Are you ready, dear? Yes, dear, in just about two seconds. Good. And, Mary, you know what? What? I've decided that going on a picnic isn't such a bad idea after all. <laughs> An afternoon with no phone calls, uh, no visitors. <laughs> well, it'll do me good. Yes, dear. A quiet afternoon will be nice. It sure will. So let's go, and whatever you do, don't tell anyone where we're going. <laughs> Mr. Andrews thinks he's going to spend a nice, quiet afternoon. He seems to have forgotten that Archie is going along. But no matter who goes along on your picnic, here's a great picnic suggestion. Swift's Premium Franks. 
perfect for picnics, each pound of plump, delicious Swift's Premium Franks is wrapped in the handy cellophane package that makes them easy to carry and extra fresh. Yes, you can be sure, doubly sure, that Swift's Premium Franks are fresh. For Swift's Premium Franks are made fresh daily in Swift kitchens from coast to coast. Then wrapped in the flavor saver pack that seals in all the natural goodness of each juicy Frank. Made of all dinner quality meat, Swift's Premium Franks are as rich in nourishment and energizing protein as the most expensive cuts of meat. So ask for them by name, the Franks of all dinner quality meat. Swift's Premium Franks. And now back to Archie and his mother and father. We find them just arriving at Rock Hill, all set for the big picnic. Well, folks, here we are. Good old Rock Hill. Well, it's a long time since we've been out here. It certainly is. Oh, my, isn't it lovely? Just look at the trees and the grass and the hill. Yes, it's pretty all right. Very pretty. Let's eat. <laughs> Fred, we will, we will. But we have to get settled first, don't we? Well, yes, I suppose so. But I... Oh! Gee, where's Jughead? Jughead! Jughead! Who'd you expect? Elsie the cow? <laughs> Yes, Jughead. I expected to see Elsie the cow before I expected to see you. What in tarnation are you doing here? Going on a picnic. Gee whiz, you are, Jug? Well, that's funny. So are we. That's the picnic I'm going on. <laughs> huh? Jughead, you mean you knew we were coming out here? Uh-huh. And just who told you? Well, I was... Wrong. Archie, did you tell Jughead we were coming out here? Oh, no, Dad. I certainly did not. Did I, Jug? No, I... Well, you see that? Well, I still want to know okay. how he... What's the difference? The boy's here now. And what harm if he joins our picnic? What harm? What harm? Mary, that boy causes enough trouble when he just visits at our house. Imagine what he can do in a picnic. Hey, Fred, don't be silly. We have enough to eat for everyone, so let's just get settled and start picnicking instead of arguing. Oh, me. All right, dear. All right. The sooner we eat, the better. Oh, Archie, spread out the tablecloth and blanket and... Fred, you're not going to eat right here, are you? Why not? Well, I don't know. We ought to find a nicer spot than this. This is so near the road. All right, then let's go over to that little hill there. All right, dear. That looks like a lovely spot. Yeah, but there's poison ivy over there. Well, let's go over there near the creek. Yeah, that's a good spot. There's mosquitoes over there. Yeah, well, let's go over there on that clear piece of ground. All right, dear. But there's no shade over there. Uh, oh, I me, mean, Jughead, look. Is there any place at all around here that suits you? She was, Mr. Andrews. I'm just looking out for your comfort. Well, Did you want to get poison ivy? Yeah, I no, don't care. Do you want to get bitten by mosquitoes? I don't Jughead, care. Jughead, will you... You want to roast in the sun? I don't all care. All right, Jughead. So you don't care. Will you please be quiet? Oh, me? Yes, you. Now, where would you like to have our picnic? Well, right here's not bad. Oh, me... That's what I said. We could have decided that five minutes ago and been eating by now. Oh, Fred, we'll eat soon enough. Now, you spread the tablecloth, and Archie, open the suitcase, and we'll get the dishes and cups out. Okay, Mom. Uh, Jughead, take the other end of this tablecloth. Oh, boy! Uh, what? Jug, what's the matter? A bull! What? Right over here, big bull! Run for your life! Oh, boy, he's coming this way! Right here, Fred, what do we do? Go, run, Mary, run like the dickens! Oh, oh, boy, oh, go! Go, run, Mary! Oh, oh, boy! Oh, Mary, climb up on the fence. I'll lift you down. There, I got you. I got you. Fred Andrews, did you have to drop me? Mary, I didn't drop you. I fell. And get off my stomach. Here, Mom, take my hand. There. there. Oh, thank you, dear. Yeah. Oh, Fred, did I hurt you? Well, you didn't do me any good. Well, the main thing is we're safe here. Yeah, and a good thing, dear. Yes, sir. I'd like to see that bull just try and... You... Jughead. Huh? Jughead, is that by any chance the bull you saw? Uh-huh. Oh, for pity's sake. Jughead, that's only a cow. 
A cow? Yes, Jughead, a big, fat, tired, old, friendly cow. Gee whiz, Jughead, how the dickens could you mistake that old cow for a bull? I don't know. I guess I didn't see the faucets. <laughs> Jughead. Oh, great. Mary, I told you that boy would give us trouble. I but told you. What's the difference? Getting angry isn't going to help any. It's all over and done with, so... Let's just forget it and go back to where our things are. There's no harm done. No harm done? Barry, you think getting half scared to death, running around like a streak of lightning, scrambling over a fence, and then having you fall flat on my stomach is no harm done? Fred, I said forget it. Yeah, Dad, come on, let's go back. There's a gate in the fence right here. Oh, yeah, all right, I won't say another word. Open that gate, Archie, and we'll go back. Okay, Dad. All right, and be sure you close it after us. Yes, Dad. And Jughead, for the rest of the afternoon, if you see anything alive, even if it's just a beetle, you look at it twice before you start screaming it's a bull. Okay, okay. Now, Mary, for Pete's sake, let's eat. In a minute, dear. Uh, finish fixing that tablecloth, and Archie, get the suitcase open. Okay, Mom. Uh, Jughead, set out those plates and cups and some silverware. Yes, Mrs. Andrews. And Archie, hand me the lunch basket. I'll get the food out, and then we can eat. Good. It's about time we... Oh, me. Thunder. Thunder? Oh, yeah, Mom, it's raining. Oh, dear. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Click, everybody under that tree. But, Fred, we can't leave all these things here. All right, everybody grab something. Quick, uh, oh, boy, it would rain right now. I got the lunch basket. Mom, take the table. I got the blanket. I got the suitcase. Now hurry up. Hurry up. Oh, hurry up. Right, right, right. Right. Hurry up now. Oh, hurry up. Right. All right. Here, here, here's the tree. Now, everybody, get close to the car. Yeah. Oh, we're crazy. We're still getting wet. Yeah. Dad, maybe we better run for the car. Oh. Not until this rain lets up. Now, quick. I'll hold this blanket over yeah. our heads. And uh-huh. Everybody get under it like a tent. Okay. Here. Here, Mary. Get under this. All right. I'll hold it higher. Dear. Yeah, let me uh-huh. under. John, quick pushing. Oh, gee, what do you think? I want to get wet. All right, you two, stop squabbling. Now, is everybody under the blanket? Uh-huh. Yeah. Good. Well, we're all right here. Now, we can just stay here until that rain stops. Yes, yeah, sir. Good thing I thought of this tent idea. <sighs> yes, sir. Let it rain. Let it. Oh, good grief. She was. It stopped. Oh, for pity's sake. Gee whiz, it was just a sun shower. Well, how do you like that? We're all set for a picnic. It rains like crazy. We get soaked to the skin, and now it stops. Well, Fred, what's the difference? In that sun, we'll dry out in no time. And we can still have our picnic. Yes, we can still have our picnic, if you don't mind sitting on wet grass. What? Mary, you don't think the rain fell only on us, do you? But just look, everything's sopping wet. What kind of a picnic can we have now? Gee whiz. Well, Fred, I have an idea. Huh? You see that big flat rock over there? Yes. Well, we can just put our dishes out on that like a table and put some rocks around it and sit on them and we'll be even more comfortable than we would have been sitting on the grass. Well, I don't oh, know. Oh, sure, I... Dad. No sense going home now that we're out here. Oh, all right. We'll go have a picnic on that rock. But the only reason I agree is because I'm so hungry I could Fred, eat that we'll rock. Fred, we'll eat in just a minute. Uh, now, boys, bring everything over to that flat rock. Okay, Mom. Boy, I'm sure glad you thought of that. Yeah, but I'm sure wet. Well, Jughead, while Mrs. Andrews and I set out all the things, you and I should go look for some dry wood. Huh? Huh? Well, we'll build a fire, and that way we get dry quicker. Gee, that's a good idea, too, Dad. Come on, Jug. Okay. But where are we going to find dry wood after that rain? Jug, you can find some under a log or a bush or a tree or something. Now, you go look over there. Archie, you go look over that way. Okay, Dad. Come on, Jug. I am. I am. Oh, now I'm going to sit down for a minute and catch my breath. Wow. Fred, don't sit on the wet grass. Oh, I won't, dear. I won't. I'll sit down on this small stone right here. Oh, oh that's it. Well, Mary, you know, I think this is going to work out after all. <laughs> I... Oh, Fred, what is it? I don't know, dear, but... I could have sworn this stone I'm sitting on just moved. Fred, don't be silly. How could a stone... Oh, Oh, Fred, it's got legs. Legs? It's moving, it's moving. Oh, Mary, I... Mary, I... Fred, do something. Take it away. Mary, come down off that rock. It's only a turtle. A turtle? Yes, dear. (laughs) Yes, a big old mud turtle. There, you see. Oh, for pity's sake... Fred Andrews, you scared me half to death. 
sitting on a turtle. Well, Mary, I don't think the turtle liked it either. <laughs> but I could have sworn that was a rock. It was lying right there, and Mary, it looked look at like... all the wood I got in the... Gee whiz, look at the turtle. Yes, Archie, your father thought it was oh, a rock. Oh, gee whiz, isn't it pretty? Archie, put that turtle down. I just want to see it, Mom. Gee whiz, aren't you a pretty little turtle? <laughs> Archie, will you stop petting that turtle? Mom, it's just a nice old turtle. Nothing to be... Oh, he bit me! Oh, dear. Oh, good grief, oh. it's a snapping turtle. My finger, make him let go. Oh, Fred, do something. Get him off me. Archie, I gotta I... use this finger again. Archie, I... I can't go around wearing a turtle. Archie, oh. Archie, get your oh. finger out of his mouth. Dad, you'd better talk to the turtle. Oh, my finger. Oh, oh. Fred, hit him with a stick. Who, oh, Archie? No. Oh, oh, oh. The turtle. Oh, all right. Archie, hold out your hand. Okay, but hurry up. I will. Oh, my wrist. Oh, my wrist. Oh, good grief, I oh. missed. Archie, hold oh. him out. I'll hit him again. Oh, no, you don't. You nearly broke my... Gee whiz. What happened? The turtle let go of my finger. Oh. For pity's sake. Archie, is your finger all right? Oh, sure, Mom. He didn't hurt me. It just felt funny to have him hanging on that way. Oh, great. Well, anyway... <laughs> Anyway, he's off your finger now. Now, shoo, turtle, scat. <laughs> Thank goodness that's over. Fred Andrews, the next time you sit down, please look what you're sitting on. Well, Mary, how can... I, I, I mean, I, I did look here. But I thought it was a rock. Hey, everybody, look at all the wood I got. Oh, fine, fine, Jughead. That's... Uh, Jughead. Huh? Jughead, you smell. Fred. Well, he does, Mary. Don't you smell it? Well, Fred, I don't smell a thing. Oh, dear. Oh, boy, you sure do, Jug. Jughead, what happened to you? I had a little argument with a skunk. <laughs> the skunk won. And how? Oh, for pity's sake. Oh, Jughead, that is absolutely the worst odor I've ever smelled. She oh. was at the skunk's fault, not mine. I know it, but can't she go wash or something? Fred, that won't help. That odor will cling to his clothes for weeks. Oh, great. Well, Jughead, you'll just have to go stand over there. Well, I want to stay here. But Jug, how would you like to have to stand over there? Jug, I asked the skunk to get me all smelly. Jughead, I... You mean a skunk. You'll smell, too. Jughead, would you please stop arguing with me and go stand over there before I suffocate? We can't have a picnic with a skunk. I mean, with, with, with that odor. What about me? I want to eat, too. You'll eat. We'll throw you a sandwich. Now, go on. Go ahead. Just stand over there. Way over there. She went. Okay. A fine thing. Ooh. Oh, fresh air at last. Fred, you shouldn't have been so harsh with the boy. He couldn't help it. Mary, I know he couldn't help it, but does that mean I had to smell it? Now, for Pete's sake, let's eat before I starve to death. All right, Fred, we'll eat right now. Just sit down and try not to pick another turtle. Yes, dear, and there's no need for sarcasm. Archie, you sit down, too, and don't sit on the wet grass. Oh, I won't, Mom. There's a nice little sand hill right here. Good. Uh, now, Archie, as soon as we get the dishes and cups all laid out, we'll be all set. Fred, would you hurry? Fred, would you hurry? Fred, would you? Archie, what on earth's the matter with you? Well, I don't know, Mom, but something sure tickles. Something what? <laughs> tickles. Well, Archie, what's tickling you? I don't know, Mom, but I got the itches all over. <laughs> oh, good grief. Mary, look, the boy sat on an anthill. An anthill? Yes. Yeah. Hey, it's like there's a few uncles, oh. don't! Oh, Fred, quick! Help me brush them off! Oh, he's covered with them! Archie, stop squirming, Sly, and get these ants off you! Well, get the ants off me, and I'll stop squirming! Oh, Fred, there's a bunch on his back! Kill him! Dad, she meant kill the ants, not me! Oh, my boy, I'm over there! I got ants in my pants! Archie, you mean they've gotten under your clothing? And how? Oh, good grief. Uh, well, look, Archie, oh. the only thing to do is to take your clothes off and brush them out. Take my clothes off? Here? Well, Archie, right I... Right out in the open? Archie, Right under Archie. a cow or something might see me? Archie, I didn't mean right out here. Oh, where did you mean? Go over there in those bushes. You'll have all the privacy in the world. Oh, gee, okay, Dad. But I sure didn't expect to get undressed on a picnic. Oh, Mish. 
Mary, how do these things happen to us? All I want to do is have a picnic. That's all. Just eat something. But first Jughead, then the rain, then Jughead and the skunk. Now, then... Fred, there's no point in your getting all upset over nothing. Oh. I'm sure the worst is over. And as soon as Archie gets the ants out of his uh, clothing, we'll go ahead with a picnic. Now, nothing else is going to happen, dear. Nothing else could. Boy, it's sure cold in here without any clothes on. Archie, never mind the weather report and hurry up. I'm hungry. Okay. Oh, that boy. Mary, sometimes For I think... For pity's sake, look. What now? A car just stopped over there. Oh, fine. That's all we need is another bunch of picnickers. Somebody with a dozen kids and a Fred, few dogs and it isn't and another bunch of picnickers. It's Veronica. Oh, all right. For a minute. Who? Veronica. Mom, did you say Veronica? Yes, dear, Veronica. Gee whiz, I'll be right there. I'm almost fresh. Uh, Mary, I... Wait, wait, wait. Jughead, we know that. I... Hello, Mrs. Andrews. Hello, dear. Hello, Mr. Andrews. Hello, Veronica. Hello, Veronica. My goodness, Jughead. What are you all doing way over there? I smell. <laughs> what? Jughead had, had a little trouble with a skunk, Veronica, and we're sort of airing him out. Oh, I see. Uh, Veronica, mm. if you don't mind my asking, what are you doing out here anyway? Oh, I heard you folks were having a picnic here at Rock Hill, and so I decided I'd drive out and join you. Mm, I see. Mary, was this picnic of ours front page news of the Gazette or what? First Jughead, then Veronica. Fred, what's the difference? Do you want to eat or do you want to play detective? Eat, by all means. All right, then. Hiya, Veronica. Hello, Archie. <laughs> oh, great. Hi, y'all, Archiekin. Mm. <laughs> Archie, I'm... I'm awful glad to see you, Archie. See ya. <laughs> oh, fine. Archie, didn't you get all the ants out of your, pe- your clothes? Sure, Dad. All right, then stop giggling, and if we're ever going to have a picnic, let me... Oh, look, another car. What? Oh, I'm glad we decided to come out to nice, quiet, secluded Rock Hill for a picnic. Gee whiz, it's Betty. Hello, everybody. Oh, Hello, Hi, Betty. dear. Hello, Betty. Hello, Betty. Golly, what's Jughead doing way over there? Well, he met a skunk, and we had to give him the air. Golly. Hello, Betty. Veronica, what are you doing here? Well, after you told me about the picnic, I decided I'd drive out. Do you mind? Well, no, of course not. Oh, dear, Fred, the cow again. Now, Mary, don't get excited. Well, Dad, it's I... It's just that old cow Dad, again. I... And she won't hurt you. Dad, Well, I... what is it? There's another cow over here. Another cow? My goodness. Now, don't get excited. Two cows won't... Here comes you. another one. Betty, I... Oh, dear. Mary, please. Oh, There's another one. Archie, we're Where are they all coming from? Oh, Veronica, I... That gate over here. Archie, I... I... When I got the one... Stop it. I thought Fred, I told you... Fred, there's a cow on my blind head. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, Archie, please. Veronica. Mary, please. Archie, quiet. You can't do that. Quiet. 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 And you, too. She was that. You even scared the cows away. Yes, and a good thing. Now, you listen to me, all of you. This nonsense has gone far enough. Too far, in fact. So the cows... <laughs> just be quiet. Now, I've had just about enough of this. All afternoon, we've been running around, moving here, moving there, sitting on hurdles, getting visitors, and chasing cows. Don't forget the skunk. <laughs> I wish I could. Now, Jughead, for the last time, you go stand over there so I can breathe. Yes, Mr. Andrews. And I don't want to peep out of you two girls. Yes, Mr. Andrews. And the same goes for you, Archie, you hear? Yes, Dad. And Mary, I don't care if you're set up yet or not, but I want to eat right here and now. Yes, dear. Archie, hand me the lunch basket and we'll all eat. Okay, Mom. Here you are. Thank you, dear. Well, that's funny. What's funny? This lunch basket feels awfully light for... Oh, for pity's sake. We forgot the food. Forgot the food? Oh, no. Tender beach 
friends, you really know what you're getting when you ask for Swift's Premium Franks. Made fresh daily in Swift kitchens from coast to coast, so you know they're fresh. Made by Swift, so you know they're top quality. Ask for them today. Swift's Premium Franks in the new handy one-pound cellophane package. And while you're at your dealers, be sure to ask for Swift's Brookfield Sausage, the sausage with the just right seasoning. And don't forget that your dealer has a tempting variety of Swift's premium table-ready meats. Tasty cooked specialty is being featured this week. A delicious luncheon meat, Swift's premium cooked specialty is all meat. No bones, no waste. An economical, flavorful meat that the whole family will enjoy. Swift's premium cooked specialty is just the thing for refreshing summertime lunches, suppers, and picnics. For a meal in a flash that saves plenty of cash, get Swift's Premium Table-Ready Meats. And now, back to the Andrews. It's later that day. The Andrews have returned home where they finally ate their picnic lunch in the dining room. Oh, well, Barry, now I feel a little better. Oh, that's good, dear. And now if you're through eating, I'll put these picnic things away. I'll help, Mom. Oh, that's all right, dear. I'll just put this empty lunch basket in the closet and... Oh, oh Mary, what is Look it? Look in the lunch basket! The turtle! Oh, no. Oh. You've been listening to another chapter of the adventures of Archie Andrews, written by Carl Jampel and based on the copyrighted feature appearing in Archie Comics magazine. Archie was played by Bob Hastings, Jughead by Harlan Stone. Mom and Dad Andrews are played by Alice Urman and Arthur Cole, Veronica and Betty by Gloria Mann and Rosemary Rice. This program is produced and directed by Kenneth McGregor. Listen next Saturday when Swift & Company, makers of Swift's Premium Franks, brings you more of the merry adventures of Archie Andrews. This is Bob Sherry wishing you all a very pleasant weekend. So long. Swift and Company invite you to stay tuned for Meet the Meeks, which will be heard immediately over most of these stations. That was Archie from 1948, and now one more swell episode of The Aldridge Family. This is also from 1948. The Aldridge Family, based on characters originated by Clifford Goldsmith, and starring Ezra Stone as Henry, with Jackie Kelk as Homer. Henry! Henry Aldridge! Coming, Mother! When you take a typical American family, plus some friends and neighbors, and then add one teenage boy, well, you needn't bother to stir things up. The boy will always attend to that. Henry Aldrich is no exception to the rule. The scene opens in the Aldrich living room. It's early morning. Now, Alice. Now, Mother. Sam, I'm not crying. Of course not, Alice. Of course not, Mother. Here, take my handkerchief. Alice, you knew Mary would be doing a thing like this eventually. Yes, only... Sam, she's so young. You and Father wouldn't want me around the house for the rest of your lives, would you? It's just a matter of getting used to the idea, Alice. You'll get over it in no time. Of course you will, Mother. It's Henry Aldrich. Oh, gee whiz. Henry. Henry Aldrich, how long have you been there under that piano? Why, not long, Mary. Dear, please get off the floor with your clean sweater. Yes, Mother. And what's in that gunny sack beside you? Gunny sack? Mother, that's no gunny sack. No? Gee whiz, no. Then what is it? Hi, Mrs. Aldrich. My goodness. (laughs) Sam, it's Homer. An understandable mistake, Alice. (laughs) 
Henry, would you mind telling us what you and Homer were doing under that piano? Doing, Father? If you please. Why, um, you might say we're looking for a golf ball, Father, that accidentally rolled under there from the hall. A golf ball? Yes, sir, and I was helping him. You don't say? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then may I ask why you didn't let us know you were there? Why, um... We didn't think it was polite to interrupt you. Henry Aldrich, I never thought you'd stoop as low as spying on your piano on your own sister. Spying? Mary, I was spying? Yes, you were. Well, honest, Mary, we hardly heard a word, did we, Homer? Gee, no, hardly a word. <laughs> well, then suppose you each take an apple and go outside. Outside? Yes. Before we find out why Mary's leaving home. Homer! Mr. Aldrich, I'm not nosy. I'm just naturally curious. <laughs> when the time comes for you boys to know, you will be told. Now run along, Henry. Yes, Father. Come on, Homer. Well, Alice? Mother, won't you please give me your permission? Boy, Henry, why do you suppose they're throwing Mary out of the house? Homer, they're not. No? She's throwing them out? <laughs> no, she's just leaving peacefully. What for? Well, don't you get it? Mary's finally getting married. Mary? Sure. Mary? Sure. To a fella? Homer. <laughs> it's just that I've always looked at her as just a member of your family. Not someone a person would marry. Why not? Gee whiz, when you forget your prejudice, Mary's really a darn good-looking girl. She is? Sure. Henry, who do you think she's doing it to? Doing what to? Getting married to. <laughs> Gee. Kermit Hannigan, I guess. The Kermit Hannigan who's a reporter on the Times? Well, who else could it be? Oh, boy, Henry. You'll be able to get your name in the paper any time you want to. Mm, not exactly, Homer. Kermit sort of specializes in obituaries. Now, Mary, I must start my housework. But won't you say you'll let me first? Alice, why not? Sam, I told you I... Henry, why aren't you outside? Oh, why, we're just about to go, Mother. Come on, Homer. Okay, and good luck, Mary. Homer, we're not supposed to know. You see, Mother, even Homer approves. Dear, Homer is not your mother. Why not say yes and get it over with? Well, Mary, will you ask Alvin to let you come home to lunch every day? All the way home? Oh, well, Mary, I'm sure he can spare you for that long. Well, I'll ask him. And tell him I insist that you take a nap in the afternoon. Now, Alice. Sam, she's always been a little weak since she had her tonsils out. That was when she was 12. I know, but she's never completely recovered. Mother. Now, Alice, I was 14 when I got my first job, and it did me a world of good. Yes, Sam, but your tonsils were like iron. Alice, why get so upset over a little thing like Mary getting a job? Sam Aldridge, if your only daughter were going to work in a hardware store filled with saws and chisels, you'd be upset, too. <laughs> sodas, boys. Thanks, Mr. DeHaven. Uh, now, what'll it be, Mrs. Kilmer? She whiz. Imagine. Poor little Mary getting married. Homer, what's so terrible about that? Gee whiz, all people have to get married sometime. Show me one person who isn't. Your Aunt Harriet. She's a rare case, Homer. Besides, she's going to marry Alvin Springer someday. The one who owns Springer's hardware? Yeah. When? Someday. She better hurry if she's going to. Homer, she's not that old. She's just around 40. Sure. But where around 40? <laughs> just around it, Homer. She's been that way for as long as I can remember. Well, 40's a good place to get stuck, I guess. <laughs> Gee, you know, it's going to feel funny with Mary out of the house. Funny how? I don't know. I'll miss her. Gee, there's one swell kid, Mary. When I think of all the swell arguments we've had together, gee, there's one swell kid. Henry, you'll get over it. Sure, but just the same, every time I pass her empty room, I'll get a pain. Right here. Excuse me, Henry, did I hear you say you had an empty room? What's that, Mr. DeHaven? If it's for rent, my nephew might go as high as six dollars a week. Six dollars? Take it, Henry, take it. Now, wait a minute, Homer. Mr. DeHaven, we're not renting the room. It's just that my sister Mary is getting married, we think. You don't say. Uh, what's that, Mrs. Kilmer? Yes, I'll be right with you. 
Well, if you decide to rent that room, Henry, let me know. Gee, Henry, six dollars. Why did you turn them down? Of course, it's ridiculous. That's why. Well, what's ridiculous about it? You said yourself every time you pass her room, you'll get a pain. Right here. Well, sure, only what would my father say? Henry, he'll probably double your allowance if you bring in six extra dollars a week. I don't know. You might even get more than six dollars if you throw in breakfast. Breakfast? Homer, my mother would never agree. Why not? What's one more stranger at breakfast? But that takes all the profit out of it. Henry, how much can one egg and one orange and one cup of coffee cost? Ten cents. Fifteen at the most. Twenty tops. Suppose he wants two eggs. We'll put that in the contract. One egg or his rent goes up. Well, I... As a matter of fact, if we're getting eight for breakfast, think of what we could get if we threw in dinner. Now listen, Homer. Henry, if your mother doesn't object to breakfast, why should she to dinner? <laughs> Mother, she's never said anything so strange to me in my life. Strange? How? Well, I no sooner lifted the receiver when she said, Why didn't I tell her first? And then she burst out crying. What? Then she hung up. What do you suppose made her say that? I can't imagine. Unless... Unless what? You don't think she wanted that job at Springer's, too? You think so? Well, my goodness, she certainly has her nerve. Especially when she knows I'm taking the job because of Kermit. Kermit? Yes. He asked me what I did during the day. And, Mother, I've never been so tongue-tied in my life. Oh, I'll see who that is. Hello? Alice, this is Sam. Do you know any other Aldriches in Centerville? Other Aldriches? Yes, that might rent rooms. No, Sam. Why? Well, I just had a call from a man who heard from another man that we have a room to rent. We? With breakfast. My goodness. Uh, what did you tell him? That he obviously had the wrong party. I should say so. My goodness, we just about have enough room for ourselves. Can you hear me from under the car, Chester? Yeah, sure. Uh, hand me that hammer. Gee, sure. I'll get it, Hen. I'll get it. Here, Chester. Oops. Oh, boy. Did that get you, Chester? No, not quite. It was a good try, though. Now, uh, what's the best offer you've gotten for the room so far? Gee, a fellow went to $8, not more than 10 minutes ago. Oh, as high as that? Did we mention breakfast was included? Yeah. And it's a nice room? Well, I'll say it has double exposures. Oh, yeah? The person who's moving out had it for nearly 19 years. You don't say. Where is this room, Henry? Well, if I get permission at our house. Yours? I didn't know you had an extra room. We don't. But we're losing Mary. Mary, your sister? She's sick? No. She's getting married. Oh, you don't say. Who's a lucky guy? Well, I'm not absolutely positive. And, gee, I wouldn't want to start any unfounded rumors. Oh, naturally. Henry, I'll take the room. You will? Oh, boy, Henry. To tell you the truth, I'm not very happy where I am. Well, I'll tell you, I'll have to get my mother and father's permission first. Well, that shouldn't be any trouble, should it? Well, I don't think so. Henry, you won't have any trouble at all. Okay. Now, will you excuse me when I make a phone call? Sure, Chester, old kid. Henry, why don't we celebrate with a soda? Number, please. Uh, L-996. L-996. Uh, Henry. Were you calling I, Chester? Uh, how are the acoustics in Mary's room? The acoustics? Well, Mary never had any trouble with them. Oh? Uh, Mrs. Smith, this is Chester. You know, the fellow who has your front room? Yes. Yeah. Mrs. Smith, are you still against my practicing in my room? I am. Well, in that case, Mrs. Smith, it may interest you to know that I'm taking my instrument and moving. Well, I'm certainly glad to hear that. I've got at least 20 people waiting to snap up that room. Mr. DeHaven, could I have a tube of toothpaste, please? Why, sure thing, Mary. Here you are. I guess you're looking forward to the big day. How did you hear about that? Oh, I heard. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. DeHaven. You must be pretty excited. I am. It's my first. 
I, uh, I assumed it was. Here's the money for the toothpaste. Thank you. Uh, who's the, uh, the lucky man? Aren't you nice? I wouldn't call him lucky exactly. I'm very inexperienced. But it's Alvin Springer. Who? Alvin Springer. The Alvin Springer that's... Who's... Alvin Springer? Yes. I've got to run along now. If you need any hardware, drop in. Yes. Y- yes, thank you. I will. I, I oh, gee whiz. Can't you watch where you... Oh, my goodness, it's you two. Well, gee whiz. Hi, Mary. Hi, Mary. Henry, I'm in a hurry. Goodbye, Mary. Goodbye, Mary. Henry, now that I take a good look at her, you're right. She's darn pretty. I know. Gee, the more I look at her, the more I wish I'd noticed her when she was available. Homer, you and Mary? What's so crazy about that? Well, hello there, boys. Hi, Mr. DeHaven. Two double skyscrapers. Yes, sir. And, uh, Mr. DeHaven, in view of business conditions, I don't think we can let your nephew have it for six. Have what? Mary's room. Oh, yes. Well, Henry, you could have bowled me over with a feather when she told me who she was married. She told you? Sure. And the last man in the world I'd think of would be Alvin Springer. What? What? Alvin Springer? Old Alvin Springer. <laughs> oh, gee whiz, Mr. DeHaven, you must be mistaken. She's not marrying Mr. Springer. She's she's marrying Kermit Hannigan. Henry, she just told me herself. Two skyscrapers coming up. Gee whiz, Henry. Mr. Springer. Homer. Of course, it has its good side. You'll never have to worry about nuts and bolts again. Homer, <laughs> don't be ridiculous. Mr. DeHaven must have misunderstood Mary. In what way? Gee whiz, Mr. Springer's promised to my Aunt Harriet. Why would he marry Mary? Henry, tell me the truth. If you had your choice between Mary and your Aunt Harriet, which would you take? <laughs> Getting back to the troubles of Henry Aldridge. Henry and Homer have unwittingly started a rumor that Mary is about to be married. But when the story returns to the boys, they're dumbfounded to learn that old Alvin Springer has entered the picture as Mary's prospective bridegroom. The scene opens in Alvin's hardware store. It is later that day. Hello there, Mrs. Springer. Well, hello, Mary. I thought I'd stop by and tell you I can take the job. Well, that's fine. My goodness, I had a terrible time before they said yes. Why is everyone so against women working? Uh, speaking of that, Mary... Yes, Mr. Springer? I hope you won't think I'm prying, but, well, once you start working here, you'll stay, won't you? My goodness, why shouldn't I? Well, I've been hearing a rumor that... You see, Mary, it takes time to train someone, and once I do, I want to be sure... Um, you're not planning on getting married, are you? My goodness, no. Good. That is my goodness, yes. Huh? I mean, naturally, I hope to marry someday. But the young man I have in mind feels he should work his way out of obituaries first. And you know how long a thing like that can take. Uh, now, don't get the idea I'm against marriage. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, can you keep a secret? Oh, yes. I proposed to your Aunt Harriet last night. You did? <laughs> well, my goodness. I'm so happy I'm going to kiss you. Oh, oh. There, Uncle Alvin. Oh, Mary, right in the front window of the store. Oh, my goodness, why not? We're practically in the same family. Yes, now that you mention it. Well, I've got to be going. Oh, uh, goodbye, Mary. See you Monday morning, 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock sharp. Well, wait a minute, Henry. Shouldn't you turn to 10 first? Henry. My goodness, why are you so flushed? Mary, I didn't believe it when I heard it. And boy, if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, I'd never believed it. Believe what? Naturally, you're free to do whatever you please, but you certainly ought to think of your family. What are you talking about? You know very well. And I certainly don't blame Mother for not wanting to give her permission. Henry, why should you object to that? Why not? Boy, I'll be the laughing stock of Centerville. Just because I... Why, Henry, I never imagined you were that old-fashioned. What? And this is a free country, and I'll thank you to remember the Bill of Rights. Okay, Mary, okay. But wait until Father hears about this. Henry, come back. It may interest you to know he already has. Mary. Yes, Homer? Mary, I may have a way out. Out of what? Mary. Mary, if I were to ask you to wait for me, 
Would it sound ridiculous? Wait for you to what? Gee, it already sounds ridiculous. <laughs> Homer, you mean wait for you to marry me? Are you mad? Why, no, of course I'm not mad, Homer. You're not? Oh, boy. <laughs> the only thing is... Of that... course, I'd have to keep going to school until maybe someday I graduate. <laughs> but if you help me with my algebra, that shouldn't take more than three or four years. Homer! And naturally, you'd have to get my parents' consent to give me away. <laughs> but that shouldn't be too hard. Homer! Yes, Mary. Dear. <laughs> Homer, naturally, I'm very flattered. You're very sweet to ask me, but I'm afraid it's out of the question. Well, if it's money you're worried about, Mary, I think I can get my father to raise my allowance. Homer, I don't have time to explain now, but I'm afraid I have someone else in mind. I know, but Mary, don't you think I'm an improvement? Mary. <laughs> Now, Chester, control yourself. Control myself, Mr. Office. Do you realize what your son's done to me? Mrs. Smith has already rented my room. I appreciate that, Chester. I've got my bags and my instrument case outside. Where am I going to put them? Instrument case? Mr. Aldrich, I'm afraid I'm going to have to insist that you find me some place to live. But, Chester... And until then, there's just one thing I can do. What? Move in here. Here, in my office? I can sleep on the couch. Now, Chester... And if we move the water cooler in here, I can shave by the window. Now, wait a minute. Henry, come in here. Oh, boy, Father, do you know what's happened? Well, I know what's going to happen. You're going to march right out of here and not come back until you found Chester a room. Chester? Oh, gee whiz. Well, you sure got me in a fine pickle, Henry. I know, but it wasn't definite. Henry, let's not waste time. March. But, Father... You heard him, Henry. And be sure the room's big enough for my glockenspiel. <laughs> could die. I could just die. Mary, calm down. Mother, how can I? You'll have to try. Your nervous system won't be in any condition for dinner. But, Mother, don't you realize what I heard on the bus? What? I'm getting married. What? Isn't that wonderful? Dear, you mean just because you overheard some idle conversation on a bus, you're jumping to a conclusion like that? Mother, it was Mrs. Kilmer, and she's never wrong. Oh, yes, but... Who is it? I don't know. Mrs. Kilmer got off the bus before I found out. Well, my goodness. <laughs> Do you suppose those roses had anything to do with it? What roses? Well, they came for you a little while ago. From who? I don't know. There was no card with them. But do you know what was in the box? I'll answer the door, Mother. Uh, try to control yourself, dear. Your hair's coming down. I'm controlled, Mother. I'm controlled. But isn't this a mystery? What? Kermit. Hello, Mary. Hello. Come in. Thank you. Did my roses arrive yet? Oh. Oh, you're the one. Well, after I heard the news, I thought, there to show you how I feel, Mary. My goodness. But the reason I came over is, did you happen to find my umbrella among the roses? Your umbrella? It wasn't until I got back to the office that I noticed I had the card that went with the flowers in my hand, and my umbrella was gone. Well, I'll certainly keep my eye out for it. Thank you. And you didn't have to go to anything as expensive as flowers. That's okay, Mary. After all, a thing like this only comes once in a lifetime. And Mary... Yes, Kern? We'll always be friends, won't we? I certainly hope so. And I, I'm sure you'll be very happy. Well, I hope you will be, too. I, I'll try, but frankly, it may be a little hard. Why, Kermit? Mary, I, I guess this is goodbye. Goodbye? Aren't you coming over tonight? Well, well Mary, after all, I... I mean, do you think I should? My goodness, why not? Well, I mean, well, what will Mr. Springer say? Mr. Springer? What does he have to know? Mary! Just because I'm going to work in his hardware store? Work? You're going to work after you're married? Well, of course, Kermit, that's up to you. Me? Yes. <laughs> I feel the husband should always decide things like that. Mary. Mary, do you mind if I sit down on this umbrella stand? I suddenly feel weak. Of course not. Mary, aren't you marrying Alvin Springer? What? Oh, that that's what I heard. I, I mean, someone told me Henry said Henry? that, I, I think. Well, if that isn't the most ridiculous thing I ever heard. You mean you're not? Now, Kermit, why should I marry someone like Alvin when I knew you were just around the corner? I mean... Mary, I... Mary, I... What, Kermit, what? I'm stuck in the umbrella stand. <laughs> Aldrich, you come in here. Mary, I haven't got time to... 
Kermit, what are you doing here? Henry Aldrich, what are you going around saying? Well, I'm saying something, Mary. Uh, Henry, Mary isn't marrying Alvin. She isn't? Of course not. I'm just working for him. Well, gee whiz. And who should know better than to start rumors like that? Mary, I give you my word of honor. I didn't start it. No? Gee whiz, no. I heard it from someone. Who? Who? Let me think now. Who was it? Who was it? Henry, is that you? Oh, gee whiz. Yes, Father. Henry, have you found Father, a aren't you going to say hello to Kermit? Uh, oh, yes. Hello, Kermit. Henry. M- M- Mr. Aldrich, while, while I have you here... <clears throat> While I have you here, sir... Wait until after dinner, Kermit. We never discuss things with Father on an empty stomach. But, uh, Father, if you're worried as to why I'm home, all I'm going to do is get a little nourishment, then I'm going to put my nose right back to the grindstone and find Chester a room. You haven't found one yet? Father, honest, I've looked everywhere. The only empty room I could find was in the YWCA. (laughs) I see. And they won't let Chester above the ground floor there. What's Homer doing here at a time like this? It must be dinner time. <laughs> I've got Chester a room. You have? Oh, boy, Father, did you hear that? Gee whiz, Homer, where did you find one? Over in my house. Your house? I didn't know you had an extra room, Homer. We haven't. I'm renting him mine. Yours? For $14. <laughs> so, Hen, could you come outside and help me with my trunk? What? Your trunk? What's your trunk doing over here? Well, gee, Mr. Aldrich, I've got to have some place to live. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Once and for all, we are not renting any rooms in this house. But, Mr. Aldrich, that's the beautiful part of it. I don't intend to pay a cent. Listen again next week, same time, same station, for another sparkling half hour with your favorite youngster, his family, and his pals. The Aldrich Family, starring Ezra Stone, is written by Clifford Goldsmith. Thanks for listening to Gee Whiz. If you'd like to hear more episodes, check out thisdaybenny.com slash gee whiz.